Since the coup that ousted interim president Paul Henry Sandago de Miba on September 30th, 2022, Burkina Faso has been under the leadership of military commander Ibrahim Traore, who, at the age of 35, is the youngest president in Africa. Traore's ascent to power represents a significant moment in Burkina Faso's political history, as the nation navigates the complexities of military rule amidst calls for stability and democratic governance. All along his time in office, Traore has kept a calm and respectable attitude, similar to how he was known before. He has taken a strategic approach to communication, carefully controlling his public image to avoid the negative perceptions that plagued his predecessors. Traore's focus on projecting the image of a resolute and decisive wartime leader reflects his determination to guide Burkina Faso through difficult times while balancing public opinion with military authority. As the youngest president in Africa, Traor's leadership style and his ability to make decisions and stick to them has created a positive effect on Burkina Faso's political path and the hopes of its people. Nevertheless, France has been making every effort to tarnish the image of this revolutionary leader or undermine his influence. As usual, Ibrahim Traore keeps being Ibrahim Traore and we will see how in this video Gold constituted 37% of Burkina Faso's total exports in 2020, with mining being a significant employer. However, political unrest and an Islamist insurgency have disrupted mining activities, leading to mine closures and reduced production. Two military coups occurred in 2022 due to frustrations over the worsening security situation. As of February 2024, Traore promptly halted the issuance of export licenses for traditional and partly mechanized gold mining and other valuable materials in Burkina Faso. Artisanal miners, who use conventional methods and limited technology, and semi-mechanized miners, who use some machinery, were affected. These miners typically sell their gold to local traders. The military leaders stated on February 20th that this suspension aims to regulate the gold market better and improve its organization. In order to keep these miners afloat after this suspension, they were being directed to take their already mined gold to the National Society for Precious Commodities for payment. It remains uncertain how the export ban will impact the industry. Artisanal mining contributes nearly half of the region's gold production in West Africa's Sahel, including Burkina Faso. The country mines between 10 and 30 tons of gold annually, providing jobs for around 1 million people. Recall that in December 2023, Captain Ibrahim Traore cancelled the mining licenses of all foreign firms in Burkina Faso, including Russian ones due to suspicions of unethical practices by multinational corporations. Captain Ibrahim was puzzled by Burkina Faso's persistent poverty, despite its abundant gold reserves. He knew that France, Burkina Faso's former colonizer, had unfair trade deals that favored itself over Burkina Faso, hindering the country's gold industry. While in the military, Ibrahim noticed how French companies got priority in mining licenses and how France hindered Burkina Faso's efforts to develop its own gold industry. Determined to break free from this exploitation, Ibrahim consolidated power to address systemic issues, including the use of the CFA franc, which made Burkina Faso's exports less competitive. He plans to abandon the CFA franc to gain autonomy. Despite risks, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger prioritize independence, evident in their actions against French influence. France's manipulation of the CFA franc further exposes its exploitation. Ibrahim's decision to suspend gold export permits has sparked debates. While aiming for transparency, it risks affecting a million people dependent on artisanal gold mining, leading to social unrest. Yet, Ibrahim has a strategic plan for the future. Perhaps Western corporations had started utilizing these small-scale gold traders in Burkina Faso to extract gold. Many African countries find themselves trapped in cycles of dependency and poverty due to the immense profits that Western companies have reaped from Africa's resources.
Traore's efforts are part of a growing movement among African leaders who are demanding a fairer distribution of wealth from their natural resources. They aim to share their riches in ways that extend beyond immediate financial gains, while also challenging the notion that their continent is solely a source of inexpensive resources. Traor's decision not only challenges the Western perspective that views African nations as mere suppliers of cheap resources, but also asserts his right to self-determination. He is fighting for sovereignty. This bold move by Traore may serve as an inspiration for other African countries to adopt a similar stance and take control of their own destiny. Under the unwavering leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traore, Burkina Faso is rewriting history by confronting the task of reclaiming control over its vast gold reserves and challenging the historical dominance of foreign corporations. Burkina Faso's mineral wealth has presented challenges in the past, as exporting raw gold meant accepting lower prices and bypassing the refining process. However, a positive change has now taken place. President Traor has remained true to his promises made during the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg. He acknowledged that his country had faced violent forms of neo-colonialism and slavery, but did not seek pity. Instead, he resolved to tackle all of Burkina Faso's crises in order to revive its development. Constantly devising new strategies, he aims to improve his country and believes that collaboration among African nations is crucial for achieving development goals. To establish trust and minimize disruptions, it is essential to clearly outline objectives, timelines, and compensation details for affected miners. Finding long-term solutions requires addressing complex issues like poverty, limited alternatives, and governance challenges. The situation in Burkina Faso serves as a reminder of the multifaceted nature of small-scale gold mining in Africa. In order for Burkina Faso and other African nations dealing with similar issues to achieve a gold industry that is both sustainable and fair, it is crucial to consider different viewpoints and their consequences. Transparency, sustainability and the welfare of affected communities should be prioritized. What are your thoughts on Traoré's choice to halt export permits for small-scale gold production in Burkina Faso? Let's hear you in the comments section. These other videos on your screen will equally be of great importance to you. Check them out and consider subscribing to the channel for more of such videos. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.